<laughs> Why is there something rather than a thing? Uh, yeah, I got a request from uh, one of my subscribers to more carefully explain why uh, modern logic actually implies that there is at least one thing out there. Um, so this is for you. Okay, in order to do this, I have to talk a little bit about logic. I, I have to explain two devices that logic uses. The first one is the existential quantifier. Now, here's how it goes. Logic is just all about finding patterns. That's, that's really all it is. Uh, we've noticed that if some sentences are true, that implies that other sentences are also true. A uh, favorite example for this is if the sentence Socrates is mortal is true, then something is mortal is true. Okay, so we symbolize this by, you know, putting Socrates is mortal above the line, and therefore below the line, the line's kind of red is therefore, therefore Socrates, something is mortal, right? Uh, but this isn't really the only pair of sentences which follows this example. There's, there's others, right? So, for example, Tom is mortal, therefore something is mortal. Dick is mortal, therefore something is mortal. Harry is mortal, therefore something is mortal, right? Uh, you're beginning to see the pattern here, right? All of these have the same form. And you know, all the logic is trying to do is, is trying to, to recognize these patterns and abstract from, from them. That, that, that's really all there is. So, so how do we do that? Well, let's take this pair. Dick is mortal, therefore something is mortal, okay? In order to make the patterns more plain, uh, logic rewrites dick is mortal to look something like this, mortal, and then puts dick in parentheses, all right? And to say that something is mortal, well, here's how it works. We take the dick in, and we replace it with an x. So we say mortal x, x is just a variable, and then in front of it, we put this funny symbol, all right? It's kind of a backwards e, and, uh, and then we but it's really easy. I mean, all it means is something is mortal. So a good way to read it is the backwards E, you read it as uh, there exists something, and then read the colon as, as such that. So it's like there exists X such that mortal X. All right? That's really all there is to it. Okay, so, so here's the rule. If you see something that looks like this, P parenthesis C, where P is just any predicate and C is a proper name, you can always replace it with, there exists x such that p of x, right? Now, let me uh, illustrate with this with some examples, okay? It's not that hard, okay? So hang with me here, okay? Let's take this uh, inference. Uh, Tom is a man, therefore, something is a man, all right? Well, we represent Tom as a man like this, man, parenthesis, Tom. And then to apply our rule, we just take the proper name Tom, replace it with an x, and then in front of it, we put... There exists x such that, man x. Simple as that. Okay, let's do another one. Tom is happy. All right, we represent Tom is happy like this. Happy, parenthesis, Tom. And then to apply our rule, we just delete the proper name Tom, replace it with x, and then we put exists x in front of it. That's it. There exists x such that x is happy, basically. All right? One more for good luck. Fido is happy. We replace it like this. Happy Fido. Then to apply our rule, we just delete the proper name Fido, replace it with X, and put exists X such that happy X in front of it. All right? Easy as pie. Okay, the universal quantifier is, is even easier now that you know what the universal quant or the existential quantifier is. Very simple, right? Here's another pair of sentences which uh, which you know are like this. So if everything is mortal, then Socrates is mortal. The truth of the first sentence implies the truth of the second sentence, right? Uh, if everything is mortal, Tom is mortal, Dick is mortal, Harry is mortal, all right? Same kind of thing, right? So here's how um, logic captures this pattern. Everything is mortal is symbolized like this, all right? There's a funny upside-down A here, all right? We had a backwards E before. Now we have an upside-down A. And it's, and it's read this way, for all X such that mortal X. Right? That's just a, just a way to trans, translate it into this funny logic uh, thing. It's just notation. That's all it is. Everything is mortal translates into for all x such that mortal x. All right? Now, to draw the conclusion that Tom is mortal, what we do is, is we take the x and replace it by Tom, and then we drop the uh, for all x such that in front of it. All right? Very simple. You just take the variable... Replace it by any proper name that you want and drop the existential quantifier. Okay, in summary, is like this. If you see something that looks like this, uh, 
for all x such that p of x, you can replace it with something that looks like this, p of c, where c is any proper name. Okay, so here's a summary of the rules. Uh, if you see for all x such that p of x, you can replace it with p of c, where c is any, any proper name whatsoever. And similarly, if you see p of c, where c is any proper name whatsoever, you can replace it with there exists x such that p of x. All right? This is just how we use these two funny-looking symbols, exists and for all. Um, and by the way, if, if you ever wonder what Wittgenstein's uh, slogan, meaning is use, means, okay, this is, this is kind of it is. This is the use that we give to these symbols, which is another way of saying this is just what the symbols mean, okay? So this, this meaning is use slogan might appear a little bit less, uh, less mysterious after this, all right? Okay, now the moment you've all been waiting for. Now that we have this under our belts, let's, let's prove that there's something rather than nothing. <laughs> okay, so here's how the proof works. All right? Step one. We say, uh, for all x, x is equal to x. Now, this is known as Leibniz law. And just, you know, in English, this just means anything that is, is, exists, anything that exists is equal to itself. Right? I'm equal to myself, you're equal to yourself. Anything that exists is just equal to itself. Right? Now, our groovy rule for the uh, application of um, the universal quantifier says that we can just take x in this formula, replace it by any proper name whatsoever. Right? I'll use the proper name A. Right? Just the capital letter A. Okay, so this is uh, for all you Randians out there. Mr. Cropper, if you got the big ears on, this one's for you. Okay? Uh, if for all x, x equals x is true, which it is, uh, that means that a equals a is true, right? But now we're in a position to apply our rule for the existential quantifier. Well, how does that work? Well, we delete all the proper names, in this case a, and replace them by x, and we put exist x in front of it. So from a equals a, you know, if a equals a, that means something equals something, right? That's just the rule for x. Okay, but uh, in English, there exists x such that x equals x reads, something is equal to itself. Okay, so um, listen very carefully here, right? Something is equal to itself. Uh, that means, you know, there is something that is equal to itself, i.e., there is something. So, uh, yeah, that's how we proved it. Uh, that's a proof that uh, there is something. Um, okay, now at this point, you're probably just saying, oh, wait a minute, wasn't this just a magic trick, just sleight of hand? I mean, I mean this is just pushing symbols around. This doesn't prove anything. Uh, yeah, you're right. It doesn't really prove anything. But, I mean, we just defined the rules for applying these two funny symbols this way. Okay, we could have defined them differently if we wanted to, right? The thing is, is, is these particular definitions have proven their usefulness in exactly the same way that, uh, say, you know, Newton's laws prove their usefulness or, or you know, Einstein's theory of relativity proves its usefulness. Um, you know, this is just, you know, our theory that we defined and it turns out to be useful. As simple as that. Okay, so here, here's the bottom line. Okay, yes, in modern logic, you can prove that at least one thing exists. All right, but... Really, it's only because we define logic that way. Uh, and point of fact, other people have defined other kinds of logics where this isn't true. Okay, we we did it that way just because we thought it was a, a useful to do so. We we could have done things differently. So, all right. Well, I hope that clears things up. <laughs> if not, feel free to ask me any questions you want. Uh, have a great one.